Today I have for you a couple of stories. Uh, this talk is more, more than actually doing the hack, is telling you uh, from what we are seeing that other people are doing hacking, some very important things and some less important things. And um, well, yeah, try to give you a bit of, of that background from the threat intelligence perspective. Uh, also to bring up a, a bit of the discussion of how it's blurring the difference between attacks on privacy and attacks on, on, on the physical world. To begin, just a quick background, just of where I'm coming from, that gives an idea of where this talk's gonna be going to. Um, well, I'm Mexican, but I currently live in the Netherlands. Uh, my background is in threat intelligence, so basically trying to gather information from different places, put it all together. And my main specialty is in OT, control systems. I think there are a couple talks also in control systems, so if you see anything like that, I deeply encourage you. Very similar, and at the same time, a very different world. You're going to see some of the slight differences. But yeah, that being said, I'll jump straight away into a quick story. So to make this very dramatic, I decided to start with this story. Um, basically, in uh, what's it, I believe June 2020, we saw an event where there, was, uh, there were some explosions in uh, Iranian nuclear facilities, reportedly. One of them was Nathan's, which is known because there was a, a, a big cyber attack uh, like 10 years ago. And uh, as this news started happening, but when they were publishing, some of the news sources said someone came in, planted a bomb, but some others obviously said this is a cyber attack, it has to be. Whether it's a bomb, it's a cyber attack that goes beyond the stock. But what is interesting in this case is that some people took that very seriously. And so what they started doing was they said, okay, let's go and hack some things. Let's go and take revenge on these guys that are you know, doing these cyber attacks against uh, Iran. And those were uh, these guys. These are two specific teams of uh, basically, well, I'm saying teams. It could be one person. It could be a team. It's uh, things that we observe in, in, in dark web forums. Uh, Vortex team, an identified team. They published this, this uh, what we call HMI, which is... Uh, stands for Human Machine Interface. Uh, it, that is basically the panel that you see for controlling a physical application, whatever it is. And they said, we compromised this gas system. This is in revenge for what happened a couple of days ago. It's terrible, and we're going to blow up something. But then the first question comes out here. Does anyone here know if this is a gas system and or what is a gas system? Which is a very good question. Well, no idea what is a gas system. It could be many things, you know? The point is that the guys weren't entirely sure what they were looking into. So, what we decided to do first is you just go to your, the, the tool of your preference, in this case, Shodan. We started looking into it to figure out what is it that these guys are looking into. Is it really dangerous? You know, how bad is their, their revenge? And, of course, we found it based on... We look at a couple of the keywords of, of, of the information they, they shared, uh, something from the image and whatnot, and then we found it. And what it actually was, was a kitchen. It was a kitchen, uh, which, I mean, not to blame them, uh, of course, this, this, this system for the kitchens is, is, is relatively complex. It does have a, a logical controller. It does have what they call variable frequency drives, which control you know, how quick some motors are rotating. It does contain uh, basically like the HMI that you saw. And basically, well, I mean, yeah, what they found was, was a, a kitchen in Israel. It did, we don't know even if it had impact or not. Of course, uh, we notified the vendor, and that is why, why the image wasn't there anymore. They are already selling the product differently. But anyway, the point in here is you're going to see there are tons of factors trying to do this. Sometimes it's going to be very interesting. Sometimes it's not, and I have stories for both cases. But first of all, um, to describe a bit of the trend or the tendency, what is this all about and why do I want to even come and talk about it, right, if it's about kitchens and, and whatnot. Um, but this is more about what I call the de-evolution of cyber-physical threats. Attention, de-evolution I highlight because historically the first attacks that we saw on a, on a physical type of system were maybe around 2010. 
They called our attention because it was a nuclear facility, it was very important, nuclear centrifuges go down a country or some countries against another country, make a big impact, great. And most of the industry started focusing on that. But over the years, mainly since around 2017, we started seeing more uh, from cybercrime, basically ransomware, impacting physical processes, how we can get access to different services and whatnot. And of course, uh, we started seeing well, different types of financial threats. And recently, we started seeing uh, like an optic in what we call opportunistic uh, type of, uh, of, of actors, uh, basically activists and whatnot. It can be a single person, can be a group that are looking actively for this type of, of um, internet connected uh, physical systems. And oftentimes for no reasons, you know, like just profit, I want to look cool, I want to do something funny, you know. So this is something that we refer to as low sophistication compromises, just, you know, like the fancy intelligence name. Uh, but the point to highlight here is uh, three points. They can do it for ideology, that's when we talk about uh, hacktivists, ego, just opportunistic, or sometimes financial. And then, uh, well, we're, we're going to mention a bit more of the cases, but how do they actually do this is actually fairly simple, which is the reason why right now we're not going to go super in, it's not going to be super technical because ironically, most of these attacks are actually super simple. Normally what you would do is just choose the platform of your preferences to go and, and, and scan around. In this case, I mentioned some examples, Shodan, Sensis, Sumai, Fofa, it, it could be Google, could be whichever. And then as long as you know what you're looking for, like some specific keywords, it can be specific for an industry, it can be for, I don't, in the, the past case, if you look for dampers, you will have found that image because dampers is specifically part of the duct where, where the, the air was coming from. Then you choose the system that you want to go, then you go, you share it in a forum, and then you say, look how cool I am, I'm going to destroy the world, and then everyone starts caring about it. So it is working very interestingly from a reputational perspective. And so the reason why we started reporting more on this was because uh, around 2020, we developed this timeline. In this timeline, it was, um, well, we, we group different types of, of, of attacks. We include attacks, uh, some tutorials that they do, like actually telling you how to do it. We're going to show some of those I mean, that, are, that are fairly simple. They started, uh, some of them reconnaissance, just gathering information about a process, how it works, what it is, trying to learn about it. We saw others, when I say unauthorized access, it means that sometimes they would just do the compromise and just drop it for no reason at all, or just to say, I don't know, I have access to, uh, I don't know, a fire alarm system. Anyone wants it? And then they go and they offer, or they charge a price for it. And then the most concerning is the, that there are some guys that actually do go and interact with the process, that actually they go and say like, oh, what, what, what's this lever for? What happens if I click here? And most often when, when there are complex processes, like if it's in a water facility or if it's in an energy facility or whatnot, there are going to be different, uh, different backup mechanisms, right? Safety mechanisms that are going to stop you from actually making a change. But uh, that is not always the case. If it's uh, something more simple, like, like the heating in your, in your building, then probably they might be able to just change it without any problem. Um, and yeah, so this is the big, the big shift that we started that we started looking and an increase in the numbers, which we can also show you uh, with actual real numbers, right? Uh, some people started asking about this. This is, this is not a comprehensive sample. You can go and find pretty much more, I'm pretty sure. It's just, you know, it's, in the end, there's as much as you can do in, in the forums. But we selected a smaller sample of cases that we found interesting to show, you know, these ones were the ones where we kind of validated some of what they were showing, that there was something interesting. Um, and different reasons what they were offering. So in some of them it was like, hey, you know, here's the access, go take for it. Uh, I just compromised it, here's for you. You know, the different ones. And this goes until 2021, and I recognize we're one year later, so I didn't want to forget that something more relevant would be uh, discussing the most uh, recent. And the point is that one of the big changes that we've seen with this activity is that it started as something that was as, let's just go and have fun, let's go and find it, let's go and get reputation. And it has recently switched also into something about, uh, let's go and share some of my worldviews, let's go and try to defend the cause, let's go and try to support something. And of course, uh, the Ukraine case has come up quite a lot. We have seen a lot of cases that are uh, on different sides, uh, country against country. And at the same time, the, the, the ones from before that we're doing, for example, in Israel uh, or Iran or, you know, specific areas that are normally targeted, uh, they started 
showing an uptick. So the next year, when we have our numbers, are going to continue going up. Well, they, they, they are already going up by now. And we're going to bring some very interesting cases of this. Because again, some of them are very interesting. Uh, there have been actually some news recently, uh, some attacks, for example, particularly in Iran on gas pumps. That was something in the news, very interesting. Um, that could have been as simple as this. But there are also some that are you know, just claiming, again, uh, something that has nothing to do. So knowing the background, um, I, I feel that's important just to know about the trend. But I think the most interesting, actually, is to go and take a look at uh, the stories, right? So I begin with the important stories, the relevant, the, the ones that actually have, you know, like, like, have had an impact or at least sound a bit concerning. Because you know, just, just, just for respect to those, they don't get to the funny ones. But uh, this first one actually happened like uh, two weeks ago, I believe. It was uh, an Iranian steel facility, allegedly. This actor actually, this is the original tweet where the actor came out and, and pushed. This is what we did. There is a full video showing like the plant, you know, it explodes. They claim to be taking care of the individuals in the plant. And they share this uh, as evidence. Let's say it doesn't match directly as evidence, but that's, that's how they, they want to play it. That it's one of those machine interfaces. Um, what's interesting about this is at this point, it's, it's a bit difficult to tell if, if I, how did they do it, if it actually is a simple, if, for, even if, they are, if this is a legitimate actor, if this falls into his category. But right now, they are using the same tactics that other of these low sophistication actors and trying to call attention in a very similar way. So this is one of the, of the first times that we see these attacks having, having a, a real impact and including this type of uh, hacktivism or low sophistication component. Then a second one that was actually from last year. For this one, we have already a bit more information because it, it already took place some, some time ago. This one happened in Florida, a, place, a small place called Oldsmar. And uh, it, it was actually reported directly by authorities. They, they started going some, some, some research. And what happened is that an actor just got access to the machine interface that they use for, for, for basically for, for the water. And um, apparently what they tried to do was to modify the parameters in the water of, of, of chemicals that they have. And, uh, well, this actually can have an, an impact also on, on an individual. The good thing, the good news is that obviously it's a water facility. It's not so simple. It's not like you just click here and everything changes. Normally there are safety mechanisms. You, have, you would need an actor that actually goes through the entire process of water, understands the different stops and how, how you, would, you would go about it. And these guys instead just, just went and tried to modify. So for the operator, the person there sitting on the other side, it was very easy to just sit down and say like, OK, nope, not right now. The interesting thing here also, in terms of impact, and that's why I had these random notes, uh, it just, th that's actually like, like, a, like a house analysis. It was like, uh, as funny as it sounds, my mother is a chemist. And she was very excited when she heard these stories. And she said, I'm going to make an exercise for my students. So this is how you integrate in schools, right? It's like a cyber attack comes, and then what would happen? And then the task for the students would be to actually calculate the pH level of the water with, with this new addition. And actually, well, it should be around 7. The value went up to 13, if the change would have happened. So this could be pretty destructive for your body, as you can imagine. Um, if you really want to know what it does to your body, I would suggest uh, to basically just Google it, and I promise you're going to have nightmares. Uh, it, it could be really horrible. Um, so we went Google darking. We went to look a bit for, for this, uh, some of these examples of the, the HMIs. And the first thing that we found is uh, very quickly, this is a, I'm going to say, real image from one of the vendors, third-party services, that make these uh, machine interfaces for this Florida plant. And uh, basically, well, they had these images of how their, their machine interfaces work. They had all this documentation and information. It very likely was the same one that the actor saw based on, like, I have it marked somewhere around, but I can see from here. Uh, but basically, they have there the specific chemical change that, that, that had happened. So we believe that might be the case. We can't tell. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, like beyond, beyond telling if this was directly the HMI, it just gives an idea of how, you know, you can start gathering more information based on like the attack happens, what comes next, and try to, to find it, what the actor might have known before doing the, the, the attack. And well, yeah, that, that, that's as much. But actually, this uh, one thing that I forgot is that for this specific attack, 
it wasn't only scanning and finding, but actually they did compromise, uh, well, apparently, reportedly, they compromise one endpoint, and then they reuse exactly the same password for accessing the machine of the, uh, of the person that, that was accessing these, these panels, uh, which normally you do it via something that's called VNC, uh, which I'm, I'm going to mention later. Then another case, another big case, is this one for uh, Israel. This is actually um, an advisory that they placed from, from the government, from Israel. I think it was also 2021. And what they were saying is, uh, hey, you know, like, be careful. There's some actor that's actually uh, trying to compromise by, by many of our systems. Uh, we are not entirely sure what they were, but based on other news and other things we found, most likely they were also water, water related. And um, what was interesting of this case is that it wasn't only actually finding the device and clicking on the button, but actually it was finding the device, uh, and then what they would go and find is what, what we call a programmable uh, logical uh, controller, PLC. And then they would go and find this PLC, and then they would interact with the PLC. They are often connected to internet, not always, but, but some of them. And then they would change what's called the, 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 la the logic, or the basically with ladder logic, which is kind of like, like the programming that you use for, for the controller. So they went and they, they used the software to, for this controller, they switched it, and then you know, that, that's how the attack happened. What's very interesting of an attack like this is that actually the access is unintended. So the compromise, yeah, there's a compromise, but it's very simple. I'm pretty sure you've heard of people compromising systems without passwords many times. Um, but what was interesting here is actually that change in the, in the, in the PLC logic is something that we hadn't seen uh, unless it's from actually like a state actor. So basically, the, the, one of the points in here is, yeah, it's, we're seeing that people are learning how to do this. They are learning about these attacks. And well, the, the more they learn, the more we see them, the more concerning they become. So, um, well, this is just uh, the specific techniques. If you're into, some, some people love watching it, just like the, the MITRE version of, of the, the techniques, basically. Initial access, just connecting internet accessible PLC. Then they use a specific common ports. Uh, if anyone here is familiar with this type of industrial applications, there are some ports that you're going to see here that immediately you're going to say 102, it's, it's uh, uh, Siemens products, SM and blah, blah, blah. You're going to see Modbus, it's in most, it, it's anything from building automation to a nuclear plant to a energy facility to, it's going to be, you know, it's one of the most used. And another one from GE, General Electric, again, you see these, these vendors often, often mentioned in there. Uh, and well, there's what I, what I mentioned. Use the software, modify the logic, and then uh, modify what, what the controller is actually doing. Now, this brings a big, a, a big question about it, and it's just going to open the door actually to more and more and more cases, which is uh, to what extent can we call this? Well, there was this discussion of hacktivism, right? Like, uh, like there's some activism component. Does it mean it actually has to be considered positive because there is like this opinion ideology? But then what they are doing, actually, there is like this thin barrier where it's not anymore like in the past about let's go and compromise a website and make a message, but actually let's just go and let's mess up with something physical. Um, so yeah, that's one of the concerns that we have. But other guys that claim themselves to be to fall as, as you know as hacktivists are have been doing this other. Uh, type of hacks. These ones, I can go through them much quicker. It's, uh, this one actually is controls a dam, like a, a small dam. Uh, the other one that you see here is actually for solar panels. Uh, this is from a different, entirely different groups, and what they did instead was to just go deploy the scanners, and then they sent us a bunch of IP addresses. They say, all of these systems are unprotected, just go play with them. They share it in the, in, the, in the forum, and then you know, whomever wants to goes and plays with them. As you can tell, there's I mean, just like, like estimating what, what, what those are. You, know, you can see there, there's some water, there's a water tank. You know, some of them might be gates, might be alarm systems, might be building automation, might be anything. So very simple to more complex. And others are also doing their homework. So like the ones I showed a second ago that they were you know, making mistakes, uh, these others actually are start, are started to share not only the, the screen or, or what they have access to, but actually doing some research on the process itself. So these two images, ironically, I mean, it's not as complicated as you think to find them because literally they got them from Encyclopedia Britannica. And they posted their, like, their homework, and then they posted the panels that they found. 
some examples, one, one interesting thing here is that these are uh, like, like directly the panels for management for, the, for controllers instead of uh, the human machine interfaces that are more, more visual. And yeah, I mean, like, it's just another type of actor yet. And this is a fun one also. This one is other actors that what they do is they go and share videos, look at what I'm doing, look where I clicked. I hope that they're going to have a terrible time. And this one is for actually, um, they had like a long video where they got access to systems of a big known hotel in Australia. And they started showing how they, they play with the temperature, with the air conditioning, with the water, with but not. Who knows, uh, you know, maybe they had some angry guests that day, but I guess that's, we will never know. Uh, but yeah, that shows one of, one of the direct impacts, like, like on a business level. But so, um, I mean, like I promised, I brought first the, the, the bad cases, the ones where, where I say, yeah, there can be an impact. And then I'm going to go back to the ones where I say, uh, it's nothing, you know, don't, don't worry. But I, I'm going to get a bit more into the opinions about that. Uh, for now, the only thing I have to point out is that uh, thanks to this guy, he actually allowed us to use uh, his image, uh, obviously for not-profit reasons. But uh, yeah, it's just one of my favorites. Um, so, amateurs. Let's talk about the, 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 the funny cases that I was mentioning. This first one, I already mentioned it, uh, is the kitchen. As I mentioned, you get the gas systems that actually uh, are a kitchen, but it's our, our favorite. Then you go to the second one. Um, the second one is actually one of my favorite guys. Uh, he's actually a Latin American guy fairly clear about uh, what they do and what they want to do. So actually, this guy actually claims to have an intelligence company. And his intelligence company is a website, uh, basically where they offer dumps and leaks and you know, tons of, uh, of things. Uh, I don't know if they make money or not or whatever, but you know. Uh, what's interesting is that most of the offerings from this person are actually quite open. You don't have to even go like, like really uh, you know, into dark web forums or anything. Often you can find it. Here's an example, just using some darking, we, we, we went and find this, what this guy was, was sending. We have this map that shows like from all the different compromises that come out. And the clarification of why I place this, this uh, individual in here is because even though I mean, there is clearly like a capability of doing different hacks and whatnot, uh, normally the estimation of the impact or what it is, is quite different from reality. So whenever we see this uh, account posting something, they might say, I had access to SCADA systems. Uh, and what they actually had access to is maybe a SQL database, or maybe the backend for a website. And then you actually go validate, and you see that actually you know, the product that's being sold has a very big difference from what is being claimed. Yet, very prolific. This one is uh, even cooler. This is uh, actually. <laughs> um, a specific uh, group of actors, they shared this control. They said it's, uh, it's a control for a German train. And it was for a German, but for a German model train. So it's very funny because, I mean, of course, to be fair, to be entirely fair, when you look at the human machine interfaces from a couple minutes ago, they do look like video games from the 80s, right? I mean, it, normally they are not made to be beautiful. They are made to be useful. They are made with an engineering mindset that says, this is how the diagram looks. It has to be useful. You have to understand the engineer, that's all. So, you know, you see this, I could see in some dimension it might control the train, but actually if you see the two small trains might have given a hint. What we do is just reverse image lookup, and then that's how we connect it to what it actually was. And then the final example of this is, uh, this is the most, the, the most, one of the newest ones that we, we, we've seen. Uh, this actor is actually interested in, po it's trying to push some political messages, not actually this is more within a country, this is something more specific, very interesting case. Um, and what they started doing is just pulling all these IP addresses from internet connected assets. And then they go, they push them, they give you a list of what it is, you know, like kind of like, like looking, it is, it's very interesting. But a couple of those were kind of funny. This one is the, the, the most interesting one that it says it's a refinery. Uh, as you can see there, I mean, it has the IP address. I just blanked it for obvious reasons. Mentions their port 5900, which is the BNC, which are these uh, connections, these remote connections for, the, for viewing. And uh, there, when we actually went to look what it was and we started doing some research, we go into this uh, website that is basically a farming system. So from our refinery, it's actually a, a feeder. Uh, I mean, in this case, we knew it was for pigs, but it could be for horses, cows, you know, in case you, you're in, in need of one. 
Um, and yeah, so th those were examples of, of where you know th they have gone with some some random funny funny choices. Um, but yeah, so let's talk right now a bit about like nailing down how say like like your own findings. It's like okay, I discuss a lot of what they're doing, how it works. Uh, as I mentioned, this is super simple, so uh, I, I can share some some of the simple ideas of basically what they're doing. Uh, in case you ever want to experiment, and just highlighting this experiment, as long as you do it in a non-harmful way and you notify the individual, might be actually fairly useful from a security perspective. Um, so for this, you know, like super quick walkthrough. This is a five-minute walkthrough that I that, that, that I brought up. It just I want to look for this um, alert. It happened in the beginning of the when it was a Ukraine conflict. I I don't know if it was tied or something. It's U.S. government. Uh, but then they share this and they say there are UPS devices. It's basically what you use when the power goes out. You know, it, it comes. It can be as simple as what you have in your computer in your house, but it can be also as complex as what they have in an engineering facility or whatnot, right? And basically, um, well, basically what this alert said is just like we've found some connected to internet. There were some compromises. Someone reported to us. Please disconnect them. Uh, you know, I highlight this solution because it's great. It's just like, we found them, so please disconnect them. Solution. It's an easy solution, but... Um, so, I mean, if, if you're interested in following up on this, for example, just go and check. The first thing I would go, I mean, like, like the thought process would be to actually look into UPS. Uh, UPS is something that you might be more familiar with, but when you go into the engineering processes, it can be super specific. So my suggestion is always looking into that specific engineering process, learning a bit about what it does, like, in the first image, if they had looked at damper, and then if you what the damper is, then you see it's, it's a duct, then you see the duct can be connected to where it's used, and, and that's how you start connecting what, what they're actually doing. In this case, uh, the first things immediately bring UPS. The most common was APC, so I decided to go, to go for that, and in Netherlands, because we were here. Uh, Amersfoort is very close, so I just said, okay, let's see what they have in Amersfoort. Um, and then this is how, how the actor, these, these actors could have verified uh, by taking a couple of minutes and looking at all the banners. And this is also what helps you go and do more interesting searches. If you go, because all of these uh, search engines, what they do is actually go and look into the banners and then from there you actually query and then from there you actually start seeing what actually you can have access to. Uh, so yeah, in this case, I mean, you get the model, you get the firmware if you wanted to check for vulnerabilities, for example. Uh, you get an image, what it is, and in this case, it was from a small store. Uh, we're not going to bother them, but um, yeah. If you see, however, there are other more interesting. As I said, this is just a very quick exercise, just like like show a bit like the logic, really, not not uh, much more than that. Um, if you want to see other type of things that are compromised, this is for IP cameras, and I I added 200 OK so that we see all, only the ones that we can actually like reach out to. They might still have password, but you can also add other filters, of course, as long as they are in the, in the banners. Uh, and this is the amount of cameras that were exposed. Now, in, in, in specifically in Netherlands. Now, the point is, I highlight this is 22, and before there's no data, this might be something about the platform, the, the provider. It doesn't mean that there were no cameras, and suddenly everyone added them in 2022. So, um, given that this is just like a very simple, common type of, not really tutorial, but just like, like walking through the logic. If you want more, then I can share some of the hacktivist ones, because those guys actually do get more specific, right? This specific one, all, all of them say the same. That's also something interesting. So it's either they're like sharing from one or learning from each other. And every time one learns, the other, the other guys start catching up. So this first one, what I had interesting is just that actually it adds that description of like, let's look into the process, what it does, and specifically, they show how to find this gas liquid system using one of the, the platforms that I was mentioning. And this one actually was interesting because it was, uh, well, yeah, probably, I, I don't know, some people here might be able to read this, not me, but it was specifically from um, in Greek. And they were actually asking uh, to go and attack any Turkish uh, type of systems. So uh, that's the reason why they're, they're sharing this. This is another one. This one didn't have a specific target, but it was, I thought it was good to just enumerate it much easier. And basically, as simple as what, 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 how, they, how they do it, they share a specific free service, Ultra BNC. You go to, in this case, they decided Shodan, but it could be Shodan, Sensei, Sofa, whatever. Uh, you go, you add your query for what you're searching for. These guys specifically tell you already for BNCs, specifically for machine interfaces that are connected. Uh, that's why they provide already the, 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 the port in there. And then uh, copy the IPs. 
paste them in Ultra VNC, and then you're going to see all your HMIs. That is uh, the easiest way that you can go and do this, these scans massively. Uh, again, I, I, would, I would suggest that if you do this, just don't go and poke anything in there. Uh, it's better to just go and notify. Um, because yeah, there's there's a ton of a, a ton of vendors that are still doing this, and then of course we have researchers. Like beyond the the the, the, the tool, how to learn about this, you can also just go and look at some some of the research that has been done. Actually, all of these platforms they they were discussed for in control systems world for probably since 2010, 11, blah blah. So right now, actually, everyone in in that group is is already like super familiar. It's kind of like a daily type of tooling. And well, you can go directly to the platforms, offer some of these guidance. They tell you what to look for, how to, how to look for it. Um, you can go, for example, uh, this, this uh, video that you have here is a video from a researcher that just went and automated the same process that, that the other researchers, that the hacktivists were doing with, um, with Ultra BNC. And then the last one is something that really impressed me. I just found it recently, but it's actually um, a security researcher. Uh, that published this uh, guidance a couple of days ago, and it's like, go and find all the vulnerable uh, sites of this country. So that's why I, I mentioned kind of like, like, you know, like the nuances between research and activism and whatnot. More in researchers, these are actually just some small group. I believe they were students, it's, it's a bit unclear, uh, but basically they just built this script to go and find what, what's called tank gorges, uh, which is basically when you have, for example, a gas tank or a water tank, it measures the amount of liquid you have, and it measures the temperature, it measures the pressure, and it basically, you, you can also, you know, like change the amounts that it has of different, different liquids. Then, well, the tools, we've, we've shown them quite a lot. And no tools, the last, the last uh, tip that I have. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then the last uh, tip that they have is, uh, yeah, basically you can just literally go to Google, and as long as you know what to look for, uh, this is a specific type of controllers, for example, uh, as long as you know what the controllers are going to bring back, it's fairly easy to go and find them. So, to wrap this up, uh, the last thing that I want to bring, I think it's going to be a bit quicker than expected. Um, what, what I really wanted to bring in here is, is the, the discussion, right? Like, like, the cases are super fun, they are interesting, it's good to see what's going on. But the most important thing here is, is the implications. Uh, and, and this is actually interesting because in, in the world of control systems, most people saw this as, I don't care, it's not relevant. It, I mean, it, it's very, you know, it's difficult. It's never going to grow. And then it started growing. And if we see it from an IT perspective, it's not a sexy topic because, you know, like the compromises are so simple that some people, if they even want to talk about this, would be like, oh, you know, how do I talk about this? It was an internet. I'm like, yeah, but they need to have it there because it's part of their process. And assuming that it's going to keep on being there, then what can we do about it? If you have any ideas, if you have any research for finding this, for how to help uh, the, you know, organizations, mainly when they have less resourcing to go and protect the systems, it would be actually something very impactful. So the big question here was, is this actually a risk uh, you know, for cyber physical systems, for, for, for the applications, for what, what we're using? And then we have a couple of things in here. And the first one is, yes, in the sense that it gives opportunities for people to learn about how to, how to access the systems. What we saw five years ago was much more simple than what we're seeing. What, you saw, what we saw last week about the Iranian steel facility, what we saw in Florida, are cases that are getting a bit, you know, across the line into being funny to actually being something that, you know, is impactful. The second thing is, uh, in terms of intrusions, the more they are, the more impactful. Just another thing we have to worry about. No one wants that. And then the third and last one is uh, the publicity. And this is actually my favorite thing in here uh, in, in terms of discussion, which is this encourages other actors to do it because no one is actually caring and no one's actually doing anything to stop it. If you have a ransomware gang and they go and they deploy ransom and then, you know, the X government finds them, goes and stops them, that is one thing. But if you go and poke into one of the systems, no one's going to look for you. No one's going to do anything at you. They don't care. So that is a big, a big point, because if it becomes something that is not relevant, then, you know, ironically, it becomes relevant. So someone is actually noticing this, besides from the actual actors engaging in this, besides from the hacktivists and whatnot. And it is actually government, which is a very scary thing. 
this image is is real. It's from a from an article that that also with with Mandiant they they were they were analyzing, and it was a document that was leaked of um, a specific plan uh, attributed to possibly government of Iran. Uh, well, not not specifically the government, but it's believed that that it, it, it was, there were some relations, and it seemed that it was a firm just doing some um, how do you say consulting. And what they did is a full research of what you just saw presented right now. And they were saying, what can you do if you go and use uh, these tools? And what can you find that is exposed? How can you go and, and, and attack it? And uh, this image actually is literally the same type of research. What, what has been argued on the research perspective is that, for example, if you go and modify some of the systems that define how much cargo there are in the sides of the, of the ship, then you can make a ship go to the side and eventually uh, trip. You know, this is a research, it has never happened, but, but that's the point. That's the type of, of uh, basically, some people are taking this research very seriously, and therefore it can become much more impactful. But uh, to close this, the good news, the good thing, the bright side is, you know, to finish on a cozy note, is that so far we haven't seen any big physical impact. Uh, the closest we had is that case from, from, from a couple weeks ago. So actually this slide was there before two weeks ago. So now probably we have, we don't know yet. Uh, but most often, if there is little risk of impact. Most often, it has been just you know minor compromises. I hope no one of you has lost uh, your power or the lights or anything because of this. And at least we have some time to to start thinking about it and see what we can do about it. And yeah, I mean, if any one of you gets more interested, please feel free to reach out. We'll be super happy to have more more heads looking at this problem. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Uh, I hope you find this useful. And yeah. That's all for my side. So we've, we've got time for a few questions. Um, does anyone have any questions? I've, I've got one, actually. Um, whose responsibility do you see it being to fix the problem? Do you see it as being the manufacturers or the people who deploy these different systems to secure them? Well, there, there's uh, many different responses to that. Actually, uh, first of all, there, are, there is work that is being, doing, is being done by the manufacturers because before security for control systems was treated as something that you can't have access, you can't have visibility to it, so you don't need it. And recently it's becoming something more of, um, you know, you actually need to do it from design. So there are some organizations trying to work right now on how to incorporate that in the design process of engineering, building different frameworks. Then it's also the user. The problem is that oftentimes there are organizations that have no no real budget for security, uh, in which case, you know, if it's a very small organization, they're not even going to think about this, uh, but it's, it's definitely their responsibility. And on the security side, of course, I mean, yeah, on our side is, is more of the research, more of the pulling, more of the letting them know awareness and sharing. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shared responsibility, I would say. So for the, for, the, for the little shop with the UPS, did you, did you contact them and told them to secure it? Did you find that one or...? No, was no, that, that, was, that was super quick. That's something I still have to do. Yeah. Okay. I didn't go to look into which story it was as well, because I didn't want to click on their stuff. But yeah. Um, um, anyone else got any other questions? About? No. Cool. Okay. okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah.